Well, welcome to episode three of the Lou Dog Vlog. been another very busy period in my life both from a fishing point of view and a work point of view and to be fair also a socialising point of view as well. So I'm going to kick things off we're about middle of June um, I think it was the 11th or 12th of June I'd met up with Brad to film the links for episode two. You might recall that was filmed in the office uh, we had a busy day of meetings that day so um, yeah, it was good to catch up with the whole Fox European team, sort those meetings out, make plans for the rest of the year ahead. Um, and uh, yeah, that evening, I managed to uh, get down to my syndicate lake on the way home, put a bit of bait in. And it was a few days later on that Friday where I was finally able to take Piper the carp dog fishing for a first night on the bank. As a, as a real keen carp angler and a dog lover, I've always dreamt of having my own dog that can take fishing with me. Um, and since we got her, I've been counting those days down until she could actually spend a night on the bank. Uh, it's actually gonna be not only her first night, but it was also Abby's first night as well. Despite being together for eight years, I've never actually um, had her in the bivvy for a night or two fishing. She's come and visited me plenty of times but uh, I've always um, liked my own space as it were when I'm fishing so uh, yeah we decided we're doing just the one night on the ski pit and I had a mountain of gear it was the most amount of tackle I've ever taken for an overnighter two man bivvy two bed chairs cooking stuff for two people food for two people stuff for the dog um, yeah crazy amount of gear just for a quick night but um, it was well worth it. I really enjoyed spending the night with Abby and with Piper. I think Piper enjoyed it. I'm not sure Abby was that uh, impressed, especially with my cooking. I don't want this to be in the vlog, me eating. How's your chicken? Chickeny. Living the dream. Lack of vegetables and carbohydrates and colour. Very beige dinner. Um, served her up my uh, speciality when I'm doing a night on the bank and that's some southern fried chicken goujons and some barbecue sauce um, yeah she didn't seem very impressed at all I'm not sure what she thought I uh, ate when I go fishing but uh, by the look on her face she thought it was probably a little bit healthier um, and probably a little bit more diverse than some southern fried goujons so yeah that was uh, an unfortunately an uneventful night again on the ski pit um, I was back on the uh, the main ski straight where I'd been concentrating in the spring, but the fish just just didn't seem to be there, and uh, not even a tench paid us a visit. So it was a very quiet night. I decided it was a long overdue decision was to start baiting a different part of the lake, a different area that I had overlooked so far. Looking back on it now, I'm really annoyed with myself that I didn't start doing that right at the beginning of the spring campaign. I concentrated on two main areas of the lake and I left a long straight with the main big island totally neglected and by a sort of process of elimination I felt sure that the fish were probably in that part of the lake. The following day after doing the pre-baiting on the new areas, I was actually uh, out on the bank working this time with one of my colleagues, Matt Rand, who's the brand manager for Fox Rage Sal and Salmo. The job in hand was to actually get some photos of some new barbel rods in use. Now, due to uh, my job role these days, I don't really get out on the bank that much with the camera anymore. And um, there's other guys doing it, but um, yeah, the plan was hatched to uh, spend a couple of hours on the bank with Matt, getting these barbel rods shot and uh, yeah, just just keep my hand in I suppose and uh, get a bit of fresh air rather than being sat in front of a computer looking at spreadsheets. So that following Friday after work I was back up to the ski pit 
full of enthusiasm, hoping that the areas that I'd baited in the week, the new zones, had been fed on, um, and there was indications that carp had been in those areas. Unfortunately, um, I've launched the boat on my normal area on that main ski straight and checked those areas first. Um, and I was met by the sight of all the eelgrass weed that was all onto the surface a few days earlier had all died and sunk to the bottom. We'd had four or five days of solid rain and um, it seemed to have killed all of that eelgrass weed. It had all sunk down and you could just see it, big balls of it all matted up on the bottom. So final port of call was to drive the boat all the way back round and into the dogleg area. Now this dogleg area doesn't have eelgrass, it's a bit deeper um, and it has Canadian pond weed or whatever you call it and uh, this stuff was still there still coming up to probably two foot under the surface um, and it looked a lot more vibrant and a lot more sort of inviting to fish I suppose also there was no bait on those areas so I thought that's a good sign something's been feeding so I decided to do the night there um, unfortunately um, I think about two in the morning I got done by a tench uh, a few twitchy bleeps, when I reeled in, no lead, and my uh, hinge diff rig was all twisted where the fish had obviously managed to shake it and get away. So having blanked that Friday night in the dogleg area of the ski pit, I decided enough was enough. As I said, I was really downbeat at this point. I hadn't had a bite for ages, and I was just a little bit bored I suppose of fishing the same lake so for the Saturday night I decided a change of scenery was needed and I moved all my kit onto the pit next door onto the uh, the shallow snaggy lake. Over the last few weeks I'd photographed a number of fish for my mates on on that lake nothing monstrous but some real beautiful dark old fish and they had been playing on my mind and I thought you know what maybe this is what I need just a change of scenery and maybe catch one of those fish and it might just fire me back up again so after a good uh, scoot about in the boat on that pit, um, didn't actually find any fish in any areas where I could present bait. So I set up as close to the fish as I could and set about getting a couple of rods out at long range into some clear spots in the weed. Unfortunately, that ended in another blank. So I've moved lakes and still uh, no change of fortune. Piper again had spent the night on the bank with me and I'll be honest with you, I started to look at the dog and uh, start to resent her a little bit starting to think that she might have been a jinx because since I got this dog the fishing had just gone really downhill for me and yeah I'm starting to think is it the dog you know I'm not really that superstitious but I've got this dog and all of a sudden boom my, my fishing results has gone right downhill so uh, yeah started to uh, debate whether or not she was going to come with me on the next trip or whether to leave her at home with Abby but uh, just, I just needed to catch a fish really, try and get a fish, break that curse. One glimmer of hope for trying to break the curse was the fact that Pitchers and Brad from work, they were filming on a lake called Abbey Lakes, uh, probably only about half an hour from my home. They were doing some surface uh, filming for the floater fishing film that hopefully you've all seen by now. Um, and I knew that Mark was having a few bites there and I thought this could be the opportunity to sort of break the curse. Maybe not catch a fish for myself, but for Piper to actually see a carp on the bank for the first time, maybe that would lift the curse. So I planned after work that day to go visit the guys. Before I could do that, however, I had a day on the bank working with the guys from Sipography. Um, Dave Robinson in particular, one of the camera guys from Sipography, he met up with me on the shallow snaggy pit and uh, we filmed a load of uh, short snippet pieces uh, for various episodes of Sipography. So, if you've not checked out Sipography before, I thoroughly recommend you do. It's a really good uh, project. There's some great footage on there. Um, and if you're sort of serious about your carp fishing, I think you'll like it. With that done, I think we finished up about 4 p.m., 3 or 4 p.m. I, I headed home, um, sorted some stuff out, and then took Piper over to Abbey Lake to meet up with Brad and Pictures, and also Harry was there as well. He'd turned up as well to, uh, to do some footage as well with the guys. Uh, and actually, as we arrived, uh, we could see a landing net staked out in the margin and the, the ripples of a fish moving in those nets. So, or in that net, should I say. 
Um, so yeah, brilliant. Within a few seconds of getting there, Piper finally got to see a carp on the bank. To be honest with you, she didn't even seem that bothered by it. Um, didn't really care. So, but all I was bothered about was hopefully that was going to lift the curse. So the Friday night, I decided I was going to fish on the on the ski. Uh, on, sorry, on the shallow pit this time. Uh, I'd sort of had enough of that ski pit, and for me, with all that weed dying off, I wasn't really that interested. So I've decided to go on the shallow pit. Um, I've had a scoot around in the boat, found a couple of fish in semi-accessible areas. Um, got back to the sh to the shore, looked at the van, all the kit in the back of the van, and I thought, I don't even want to fish. I'm not feeling this at all. I had a bit of a headache, and yeah, I just my mojo had well and truly gone. So I decided. I ain't forcing it. If I don't want to be here, I'm not going to fish. My mate Clint, who fishes the lake, he was fishing on one of the swims there. So I went and had a chat with him, told him I weren't going to bother fishing. I think he could sense the lack of mojo in me. Um, and I sort of bid him farewell and wished him the best of luck. The next morning, he messaged me and actually offered me uh, a guest night to fish on his own lake. He, he's very fortunate to have purchased Rod Hutchinson's Dolly Mill Fishery after the sad passing of Rod um, and he's sort of closed that lake for the time being and doing a lot of work to it, restocking and um, doing lots of maintenance, maintenance down there um, and yeah he said to me look if, you, if you're struggling with your mojo you don't really fancy fishing on the pits that you've got access to at the minute why don't you drop on there for a night and just uh, I'll join you and we'll have an Indian and a bit of a social so it uh, seemed like a brilliant idea and uh, it might have just been what I needed to uh, finally get that mojo back. So me and the old dog, we uh, jumped in the van and we met Clint over there on that Saturday evening. At this stage, it was actually the hottest day of the year. I think it got to about 35 degrees on that Saturday. It was absolutely sweltering. So I was in no major rush to get over there. Um, and I think I arrived sort of six o'clock in the evening. The lake set in some lovely woods, so it was nicely shaded. Um, and it wasn't too unbearable to sort of getting rods out, etc. I'd set up in a swim on Dolly Mill, um, sort of up the, the end of the lake nearest to the entrance. Quite a bit of weed in that area and I'd seen a few fish moving in and out of the weed. So I decided to fish in there um, and just place rigs in holes in the weed with the use of the rowing boat. Had a lovely social with Clint, fantastic Indian, a few cans of fruity cider um, and went to bed. Woke up on that Sunday morning without a bite. Um, I got woke up by Piper actually, she wanted to go to the toilet. She woke me up and as I looked out over the lake, motionless bobbins, I made eye contact with the dog just as she'd finished uh, the cooler nature. And I'm sure she looked at me and said, enough is enough. I'm gonna let you catch a fish now. I've done the apprenticeship. The curse is gonna be lifted. I don't know, there was something in that eye of hers uh, and yeah, lo and behold, an hour later, I finally had a bite after weeks of blanking um, and I landed a really dark, scaly, stocky. Is it recording? Yep. Well, look at that. The first carp I've caught since I got Piper the carp dog. Absolute stunning jet black scaly one from Dolly Mill. Awesome fish. Well pleased. So with that, um, I had to reel in pretty early that, that Sunday morning, unfortunately. Uh, I'd have liked to have stayed and done a bit of stalking, but um, it was going to be my birthday on the next day on that Monday. And we had a couple of friends, Lee and Hannah, who you may remember from episode two when we went out and enjoyed some fantastic spare ribs. They were coming around for a barbecue to sort of celebrate my birthday. So I had to get back because I was going to be in charge of cooking the food. So I needed to get back, get cleaned up empty all the gear out and then uh, get the barbecue lit. So as I said, it was uh, my birthday on the following day. That's the 1st of July. And sadly, I had to be at Fox HQ on that day, which meant a 5 a.m. start for the long drive down to Essex. Not the best of uh, things that you want on your birthday after spending a weekend uh, indulging in fishing and alcohol, but it had to be done. So the early morning drive up to, uh, or down to Fox, so I say, uh, was done. I had in tow with me um, some fantastic cakes made by Abby. 
there's a bit of a tradition at Fox in the offices there that when it's your birthday, you bring in cakes for everybody in the office to enjoy. Uh, and because Abby's a bit of a, a master baker in her spare time, I uh, was very lucky to be able to take a load of cupcakes and also a big white chocolate birthday cake in for everybody to enjoy. Um, and it was very, very nice. So big thanks to Abby for doing that and uh, ensuring that I didn't have to go to the trouble of going to the supermarket and buying stuff for everybody. So that was my birthday out of the way. I think I got home pretty late on that Monday. I was very tired, um, but yeah, it was nice to, uh, to see a few, guys, a few of the guys in the office and then spend the evening at home with Abby. So that week, um, I didn't do any pre-baiting on the ski pit or the snaggy pit. I didn't even visit the lakes for a walk round, see the guys fishing there, anything. I'd sort of totally, in my mind, decided that my fishing on there for this summer was over. Uh, the last time I'd been down, there was a big algae bloom starting to spring up on the ski pit. Uh, there's a few guys putting in a bit of time on the on the snaggy pit, and I felt a little bit sort of like me being there half-heartedly was sort of interfering with air fishing, and I weren't really feeling it. I've turned up sort of in the summer after they've been having a go through the spring, so I decided um, that I, that I was sort of done on there. I was actually counting down the days until my syndicate in Lincoln reopened after spawning. That was due to open on the 12th of July, so I had sort of one more week to uh, kill some time before I needed to start fishing on there again. Um, my good mate Tony, who uh, travels all the way from Oldham down to the sort of Peterborough area normally for his fishing, he also got a ticket for the, the Lincoln Lake and he was also sort of in a predicament of having nowhere really to fish for a few weeks until it reopened. So spoke with him, um, and we decided to uh, arrange a social um, to get out and hopefully get a bend in the rod. So we decided to uh, go to Old Mill Lakes, onto Birch Lake we booked on there, um, the same venue where we filmed the Fox uh, session film that, uh, as I'm sure most of you would have seen, turned out fantastically well. Um, and I just couldn't believe it was only sort of two, two months or two and a half months since we'd filmed that uh, movie there and it had just grown up so much. The trees were much greener, the reeds were much greener, there was weed everywhere. It, it looked really nice, and uh, as we did a lap round, we found quite a few chunks close in in the weed. Um, a lot of chunks close in, and uh, I thought this is too good to be true. Like, we, we can literally sort of underarm and be fishing right next to these big ones. As it turned out, it was too good to be true because early in the uh, in the early hours of that night or morning, as you want to look at it, um, the fish all started spawning. They went absolutely berserk for hours. So the rods were wound in, and we left them to it. And I thought it was a bit sort of fitting of my luck over the last few weeks that uh, that that had happened. Chris, the owner of Old Mill, he was also fishing on Birch that night, and he had to reel in too. And he asked myself and Tony if uh, we'd like to do a few hours test fishing for him along with himself and one of his friends on the older lake which is going to be opening next year as an exclusive booking lake. He wanted to just do a bit of test fishing, hopefully catch a few of the fish in there just to see if they've uh, grown and also to check on them to make sure they haven't got any nasty parasites or any cuts or sores on them or anything like that. So we, uh, we beat his hand off for that. I mean, he told us, you know, you're not going to catch a, a PB in there, but you should hopefully get a few bites and a bit of action. And to be honest with you, the way my fishing had gone of late, all I wanted to do was hear the bite alarm scream and, and feel the, the, the rod getting pulled. So we went on to Older, uh, fished for a couple of hours, and I was lucky enough to get three bites, um, landing fish sort of around the sort of low double mark. Um, great bit of fun, um, but you know, sort of still left us with a predicament of somewhere to fish on that Saturday night. Tony had travelled all the way from Oldham to Market Raisin. It must be, I don't know, two and a half, three hour drive for him. For me, it was an hour and a half. So we didn't really want to have to go home and, and call it quits after just one night fishing. So I sort of wrapped my brain what we could do. Um, and I ended up ringing my mate Clint again from Dolly Mill. Dolly Mill's literally 10 minutes away from, from Old Mill. Um, and yeah, as a bit of a cheeky person I am, I asked not only could I guest on there, but could I then guest a guest on there? Uh, 
to be honest, if I was Clint, I'd have told me where to uh, where to get off. But he's far too nice a guy for that, and uh, he he said, "Yep, you guys are more than welcome. I'm going to be fishing myself that night. Uh, we'll have a few beers. We'll have a have an Indian again. And we'll have a good crack." So that's what we ended up doing. When we arrived, I think Tony was just as blown away by the lake as I was when I'd been there for the first time a week earlier. Such a stunning lake, Dolly Mill. It's about three acres, pads all around it, big overhanging willows, really mature. Um, and you, you can get up close and personal with these carp and watch them swimming around, some big scaly things in there. This time I went in the middle of the lake, because it's far more sociable. Tony went on the far end, furthest away from the gate, and then Clint was to my left. Unfortunately, myself and Clint, we both blanked, but Tony, uh, he managed a couple of bites. He sadly had a hook pull on one, and then managed to land one of the small stocky commons. Again, about 12 pounds, big chunky uh, set fish, big shoulders on it, and definitely a sign of just how bright the future is for Dolly Mill. Lovely carp, Tony was well pleased. Uh, and yeah, massive thanks to Clint for, for getting us out of a hole on that, that weekend because we really didn't have to go home after only one night's fishing, so really appreciated. Once again, I had to have an early dart away from Dolly Mill because on the Sunday afternoon, I had my good friend Jimmy Armstrong and his wife Faye. They were coming around for a barbecue. They were going to be bringing their son, their son Huxley and also their dog Barley. They'd not long since got married. Uh, they got married out in Croatia. Unfortunately, myself and Abby weren't able to attend because Abby had a maths exams for a final exams for her degree. So uh, we weren't able to fly out to Croatia for that wedding. So we invited them round um, so they could come round. We could celebrate with them and also so their dog could meet uh, Piper and hopefully form a, a lifelong friendship. So they came round. Once again, I was on the barbecue duty and served up a right old meat feast. Um, I don't eat a lot of uh, veg or, or, or potatoes and carbs and stuff. I am uh, a proper caveman. So when I'm cooking for others, I kind of cook what I want. And uh, yeah, I just filled that barbecue with meat um, and let Abby worry about the sort of trimmings to uh, make us let, look less like uh, heathens. One of the other reasons why Jimmy was coming round that day was to also sort out a little bit of a change in my fishing. So for over 10 years, I've used mainline boilies for all of my fishing in terms of feed bait. Um, in terms of hook baits, I've always mixed it up with, between the mainline baits, um, CC Moore Northern Specials, and also some of my own homemade hook baits. Um, but for the, like I say, for over 10 years, I'd always fed the boilies of mainline and uh, whether it was Activate, Hybrid, the Link, Fusion, all of those baits served me well over the years and I've caught some, some incredible fish on those baits. Um, yeah, massive thanks to Kev and everybody at Mainline. Um, I'll never ever say a bad word about those boilies. If anybody ever asks me to recommend a bait, I will 100% tell you that you can catch any carp swimming on any of those baits that they do. Um, and yeah, I would never have changed if I didn't think that I could get a bait that was as equally as good as what I could use with mainline. Um, and thankfully, the triple X that Jimmy had sent me to have a little play with when trying to get me to change my ways, uh, I was really impressed with it. And uh, it smelt good, the texture was good. Um, and yeah, I was happy to be using that bait um, and being on board with the guys at CC Moore. So yeah, a bit of a change for me, but uh, yeah exciting sort of future with those guys hopefully. So we're now on the 12th of July and finally my Lincoln Syndicate was opening for the start of the new season. It had been closed for seven weeks to allow the fish to spawn and I think myself along with the other members were really chomping at the bit to finally get back on there. Uh, we basically are allowed on the lake from midday on that opening day and you're allowed two hours of walking round and then there's a draw for swims at two o'clock and it's a sort of watercraft draw, first person out of the hat as first pick of swims. Last year I was lucky enough to come out first to get my first choice of swim and uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure how I managed it but again this year I came out first in the draw again and had first pick of swims again. I opted to go for a swim called the Bay. Uh, it's it's a, an area of probably a couple of acres of water and there was about 50 carp sat in this bay all sunbathing 
Uh, I knew they'd been fed in the bay during the close season by the owners and I thought it was as good a bet as anywhere to go. So decided to pick that swim and the plan of attack was going to be to fish washing line methods across to the far bank, use a bait spoon just to lower the rigs in on the far margins, try and be as stealthy as possible, try and not give away my presence and try and make the fish feel like it was still the close season. All the spotting and markering and disturbance was going in on the main body of water. This, say, two acres of arm and bay area. Um, if I could get the rods in and no lines in the water, I just felt sure that I could get a quick bite before those carp realised that this new season had started. And that caught, kind of rang true because before it got dark that evening, I managed my first fish of this new season. Um, and that lovely 20 pounder. Oh, what a great start to the new season on my Lincoln Syndicate. Just a few hours. Oh, easy. Just a few hours after getting the rod sorted, I've had my first bite. 29 pounds. Looks like a really angry male fish. Caught on the washing line method. Gave a really good scrap. And uh, yeah, I want to get it back because I want to get the rod back out. So I think there might be a chance of another one yet. So off the mark, I was really happy. I had just enough light to get the rod back out in position. Um, and yeah, at first light that following morning, that same rod was away again. Same rod's away again for my second fish of the weekend. 26 pound 10. Looks a bit another angry male. Really feisty fish. Gave me a great scrap. Really weird on that washing line method. You're getting a massive drop back, followed by the line picking up and then you're into the fish. Let's have a look at this. Look at that. Absolute beauty. Same tactics as the first fish. Little 360 rig and a Whittle Dan Northern Special white one. Absolutely buzzing. I think uh, there's a good chance of some bites during the daytime today. So I'm going to try and fish as much as I can today. Really pleased with this. Get it back. Yeah, it's fair to say the old mojo was back. Um, the fire would, had been relit and it just couldn't have come at a better time for me. Uh, I needed a new water, I needed a new challenge to fire me back up. Uh, and a couple of bites on the first night back on the Lincoln Syndicate was certainly what, what did that. So that was brilliant. Um, the fish left that area up that day, the weather changed completely, it went a lot colder, the wind blew in a different direction and the fish left. Now I should have moved swims, but being the opening weekend, there wasn't really many options to go to where I felt I could catch fish. So I decided to stay put just in the hope that my target fish from the lake, one called the Big Trouty, which is a big 40 pound linear, it's got a bit of form in the bay in the summer for getting caught. So I just sort of held onto the hope that maybe she hadn't left the bay and she was still there. But yeah, I woke up Sunday morning biteless and uh, yeah, it's kind of, it was inevitable really. I knew I wasn't going to catch. Before I left the lake on that Sunday morning, I decided to have a walk further up the pit to go and see my good friend and fellow fox consultant Jim Wilson. He was fishing in a swim called Bailiffs and uh, I thought I'd go and see him, take Piper down so he could see her uh, and have a cup of tea with him. And whilst I was down there he was very lucky enough to catch a 20 pounder himself and I managed to get a little bit of footage for the old vlog. Right, that old deformed thing, isn't it? <laughs> Fishing great either. Oh, here he goes. <laughs> and that pretty much brings us up to speed with the fishing for me so far. Um, one thing I would like to say is a special well done to Abby. Um, just a couple of days ago, before filming these links, she received the results for a maths degree. She's done this open university for the last six years whilst combining a full-time job looking after the house because I pretty much don't do anything around the house, um, looking after me because pretty much other than work and fishing, I don't do anything, uh, I don't function without her. Um, she's had all that to contend with and doing this maths degree um, and after six years of hard graft, she uh, got the results and she got first class honours, which is just incredible. Um, so yeah, I just want to say well done to her. 
thanks for letting me go and do my fishing all the time whilst you're studying. I hope now you've finished studying, you're not going to uh, all of a sudden expect to see a lot more of me on weekends because I'll still be fishing. Uh, but yeah, awesome result, well done. And uh, yeah, plans for the next few weeks, back on the Lincoln Syndicate for the foreseeable, I think. And uh, yeah, see how we get on. Autumn comes, I'm going to probably swap venues, go onto a new lake, but more of that nearer the time because I'm, I'm waiting for the ticket for that lake yet. I haven't had confirmation that I'm going to get that ticket just yet. So for now, I'm going to leave you to it. I'm going to carry on with my fishing that I'm doing right now. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you for vlog four.